In the world of fine wine, you expect elegance, refinement, and beauty. But behind the rolling hills... There should have been an outside investigation. Would you ever expect... This is the first time that I've been openly aware of, like, a crisis. ...files with CIA-style redactions. It's entirely blacked out. And where some of America's most elite wine professionals in the exclusive world of master sommeliers feel they're under threat. I took this as, be quiet, don't question our authority. It tastes like, or smells like apple skins. It smells um, a little bit like stone fruit of white peach and nectar. In 2010, Dan Pilkey received a very rare invitation, a chance to test to become a master sommelier, something only 262 people worldwide have ever achieved. Pilkey poured over thousands of flashcards he wrote out by hand with details about every important winery in the world. There are some great producers that make a Meunier sparkling wine. What he learned paid off in his then day job as a wine director. In the restaurant that we had, we were able to secure two Michelin stars within 10 months, which really had never been done before. For the test itself, would-be masters have to pass a three-part exam on wine theory, service, and the hardest test of all, the tasting where candidates get six glasses of wine, typically three reds and three whites, and have 25 minutes to name their type, age, and the location they came from. In 2018, on his eighth try, Pilkey passed the exam and received this pin. It is inevitably like winning the gold medal. But just five weeks later, Pilkey got a phone call from a member of the board of directors of the Court of Master Sommeliers, the nonprofit group that administers the test. Proceeds to tell me that they're going to void the results of the examination. Turns out the court had discovered one of its own board members, Reggie Norito, had emailed answers the morning of the tasting exam to an unknown number of candidates. In response, the board suspended Norito and started the process to strip him of his master title. But what shocked the world of wine was when the board also invalidated the test and stripped the title from 23 newly minted masters, while telling them if they want, they could do a retest on something known as one of the hardest exams in the world. I think it's unfair. <laughs> Champagne expert Jill Zamorski had her title taken away, meaning the loss of likely lucrative business opportunities. She says it happened with what seemed like little investigation. I was never contacted, not a single, single question. I offered to submit every electronic device I own for forensic analysis. I offered to take a polygraph test. So what did investigators do? This is the minutes from the board of directors meeting where they decided what they were gonna do with your exam. I, I look at this and I wonder like, what is so top secret? I think the thing that scares the shit out of pretty much everybody is, is the idea that this is a systemic issue. Ken Fredrickson is the founder of Tenzing Wine and Spirits, a distributor of high-end wine based in Chicago. He's a master sommelier of 19 years and grew concerned about how the board formed its own committee to run the investigation of actions involving the board. I look at it more from a, a business perspective. This type of situation would always be investigated by an outside organization. Soon after the board's decision, this email began circulating among some candidates. Newsy has not independently authenticated it, but the candidates say it shows Norito used his work email from his day job to send at least some emails the day of the exam meaning more evidence. Some veteran masters grew concerned and began pressing the board to see if it ever asked Norito's boss to see the emails. I said, did you guys call him? And they said no. Bobby Stuckey is the owner of Frasca Food and Wine in Boulder, Colorado. We did not roll up our sleeves, so to speak, and go to the hole and turn over every stone. That's not fair to those candidates. And it's not also it's not fair to the future candidates. A spokesperson for Norito's former company confirms that to date, we've never received an inquiry and says if what does come through, we would, to the best of our ability, respond. And while the board concluded it would be impossible to determine who cheated, 
It also didn't ask the 54 candidates to turn over any information that could out the guilty or clear the innocent. We did find the board's vice chair acknowledged a prior relationship with one of the candidates. He recused himself from a vote at the end, but remained active on the investigating committee, which recommended all candidates get to retest, and did so just three days after the committee formed. The fact that this person was still involved taints this whole thing even further. Dustin Wilson is a master sommelier who owns Verve Wine, a high-end store in New York City's financial district. It sends a message that it's kind of an old boys club. Wilson is also a star in the industry who's been featured in several documentaries. Now, Wilson's choosing to use his status to call for change. There are some fundamental things that are wrong. Newsy reached out to every member of the court's board of directors. No one agreed to an interview. In a written response, Chairman Devin Broly said the organization has implemented security enhancements and has strengthened its mentoring guidelines. But questions about the test remain, such as why does the court never tell candidates what wines they tasted afterwards? And how is the test scored? I've heard plenty of rumors and innuendo about, you know, people you know, ex examiners, you know, looking for extra points for a candidate they really wanted to pass. Indeed, a former chairman of the court wrote on Facebook, I have long wished we revealed at least some info on the wines. Problem being, the exam committee reserves the right to change the point values and scoring. He told Newsy it's flexibility that's meant to give proctors power to adjust for flaws in the test, but also confirmed they can change the scores after the exam. The more that we can not leave any kind of room for any loopholes for shifting points one way or another, that's where we need to go. But pushing for greater transparency could come at a cost. After the scandal hit, the board amended its confidential code of ethics to now read that any utterance by any member that could be construed as detrimental could result in the board's decision to suspend or terminate membership in the group. All master sommeliers were asked to sign the code. I took this as, you know, be quiet, don't question our authority, or we'll kick you out.